In this video, I'm going to be setting up a Plan 9 file server using 9Front. In the end, this will be both a file server and an auth server. So authorization can be handled by a separate computer if you think you need that much security. But I'll be combining them so I only have to worry about keeping one computer always running. For now, the two big differences between this and my install of a single user system is that I'll be choosing the cached worm file system and doing a manual network configuration for a static IP. So the default here is CWFS, which is the cache form file system. We'll choose a disk partition, SDE0, no, SDE1 is the internal hard drive. And it already has some partitions on it, we'll just delete everything. Add partition one. And we'll use up all the blocks on the disk. Use the one plan nine partition we just made. And these will be the partitions set up for the cache worm system. So we'll have the standard nine fat partition for the boot sector. NB RAM is used for authorization. Uh, the cache partition is where you will mostly interact with uh, once a day or it can be done manually. All the changed blocks will be copied over uh, to long-term storage. This gives rolling snapshots of the file system that can be mounted and used as needed. Uh, HJFS also has this feature, but CWFS is a more proven design. If you want the simplicity of HJFS, uh, single partition, uh, that's fine. I've used that for file servers before without issue. Uh, the partition called Other is used for files that you don't want backed up to the worm. Um, say you're experimenting with writing Raspberry Pi SD car images and you don't want to fill your worm partition with them. Uh, other will automatically be mounted in slash n, so large temporary or other unimportant files can be placed there. And FS worm is where the long-term storage will be. So you can see it's kind of the bigger partition there. So we'll just go ahead and accept the default. So write and quit. And here we're choosing the cache partition, the worm, and the other. And we will do the ream, which is a format. That's all done. And this time we'll be doing a manual configuration. So we'll give it an IP address suitable for your network.
Now we'll cut past the installation of the files because this can take a few minutes. All right, files are done copied. Got like another little network set up here. We're going to name the system and this time we'll call it demo. Oops. Demo FS file server. And then after that, it's basically like the uh, standalone system install to our time zone. We'll have it right to the nine fat and it's ready to go. All right, we're booting off the FS cache here. Still using the default user Glenda. And there we are. We have the beginnings of our new file server. So before doing anything else, it's really handy to use the install utility to install nine front onto a USB thumb drive. And this can be done just like the basic standalone system install. You can just use HJFS for the simplicity. have to manually pick my disk here so go back to part disk and in this case you would put an empty thumb drive in and select it to do the install so it would be SD with an uppercase U and then usually a string of numbers unique to that thumb drive and you would clear off the partition prep it and then continue to do the rest of the install onto the thumb drive uh, installing to a thumb drive like this does uh, make a boot option that's different from the install ISO in a couple ways. Uh, for now, it's mostly useful to have it as a recovery option if you mess something up in the next couple steps. Uh, later, this drive can be configured to work with your file server to boot other computers as terminals or CPU servers. Uh, I'll end this video here for now. As it is, this install will behave like the single user system, so you can shut down and restart if needed. The next video I'll cover adding authorization and adding additional users before putting the file server into its final configuration.